I decided to go back to Ange the Great's engine sim program to code an inline twin engine. Seeing that my last video on this was back in October of 2022, it's time for another engine. I plan on using that engine in this car once I get it to BMG Drive. Hey guys, it's Trice here, and let's get on with our build. So for the panel material, it's pretty much make like most of these cheap ass cars from this time period, especially the year of 1955. We're gonna be using the steel panel material with a monocoque chassis, which is kind of interesting for the Trabant body here. It uses the monocoque chassis if I'm getting this right from my sources. On like a ladder type chassis, which is more cheaper and everything, according to the engineering time, but whatever, it's gonna be high quality in a sense of everything. And lastly for the suspensions, solid axle leaf, front and the back. For the engine, I already made this, but this uses the inline 3 because this game as of right now doesn't support inline twin engines at the moment as I go here for a basic overview of the specs and everything. Well, first of all, with the sizing and everything, especially for an inline twin engine, since it's an inline 3, currently the size is set to 1,125 cubic centimeters, around 1.1 liters, with a 77.4 millimeter bore and a 79.7 millimeter stroke. If I do the math here, going from an inline 4 engine, which equals to 1500 cc's or 1.5 liters, if you were to subtract 1500 cc's to an 1125, then this will equal to 375 cc's, which equals up to 750 cubic centimeters for the inline twin build. And the usual pushrod heads made out of cast iron. So everything all cast, harmonic damper, all that good stuff. For the compression, it is set to the normal of an 8.0 to 1 ratio, a fairly normal current profile of a 25, and fairly soft springs to 35, with the RPM for this engine, including the one used in Ange the Great's engine sim, at also a 5,000 RPM. And for the fuel system, we're going to be using a standard single barrel, single carb setup with the carb size, kept it as is to a 50, with a compact intake manifold, also set it to a 50 with some regular leaded fuel, and again, 50 for the fuel map, and I think it's the same thing for the headers too, right? No, 51 for the header size with, with some compact headers, compact cast with the only option for the exhaust as a reverse flow, and the exhaust diameter at 19 millimeters or three quarters of an inch. So yeah, it's a very small boy, all right, which gets our total power to 33.5 horsepower, 44,000 RPM, or 4,400, and a torque at 48.6 pounds feet of torque at 3,000 RPM. And real quick, we compare it to like an inline six engine, it's too big. So for an inline 4 engine, it makes around 43 horsepower, and then 33 horsepower, maybe 34 horsepower with the inline 3. I think I'm gonna aim for the inline twin to around like maybe 21 or 22 horsepower in BMG Drive. So let's give you a brief listen to what this inline 3 sounds like right now. You're not going to hear that anytime soon with the new engine swap. For the drive type, we're going to be using a rear-wheel drive setup with a manual 4-speed with the top speed set right around here, 77.05 miles an hour. So let's keep it... let's do 80 miles an hour. Make this a little bit more highly legal in a way. And for the tires, let's make things even more stupid. cross by hard log life tires with the... can we do a little bit? Yes, 135. 135s front and back for the front and rear tire width. And we'll keep the diameter of the tires and the rims as is. And for the brakes, I think I put some two-shoe drum brakes up front, a little bit on the size of the single shoe in the back, around 210 millimeters, I believe, if I recall correctly. And for the under tray, let's pretend there is no under tray whatsoever with the airflow... Six. And for the interior, I might put it in here for my time lapse build and everything, but it depends. So let's use a basic interior setup with a basic AM radio because you want to hear a glorious leader in East Germany and this and that. So for the drive rates, all this good stuff. So we'll be using a manual rack and pinion type of steering with no traction aids and basic 1940s. And screws, no safety standards whatsoever. I thought you could do basic, but whatever. And finally, for the suspension, the usual for this type of car being all basic, center springs, uh, twin two damage pass sway bars automatically, and the presets... can we get a load here, game? Never mind, just did that, and we're all of a sudden oversteering. <laughs> Jesus, man. It expects that we are gonna be oversteering no matter what. This is sad. How about high speed? Oversteering at high speed! All right, we're gonna go to airfield only. What is the time? Uh, zero to 62 in 23.7 seconds. Seems very realistic. Two minutes, three seconds, 45 milliseconds at the quote unquote top gear test track, AKA airfield. That is extremely horrible. 
Top speed, 75 miles an hour, little bit of overdrive, I don't care. So anyways, let's get on ready to design this here car in automation. I'll give you a time lapse of me build a car, and I'll drive it over a BBG drive after doing the stuff in Angela Great's engine simulator program to swap the engine sound with the N-Line 3 with the N-Line 2 engine. So let's commence the time lapse portion of the video right now. So for the design of this car, I first copied the engine fixtures from my test build and pasted them to the actual car. That's because my blender skills are atrocious. For example... Exactly. Now for the build, I loosely replicated the infamous Trabant 601 made in East Germany. First, I positioned the custom engine into the car that I've copied from the test build. It sucks that there's a lack of fixtures to build a custom engine in automation, so I hastily added some 3D fixtures to make up for some of the core components. For the front of the car, I managed to add a pair of circular headlights, a large steel grille, and these two turn indicators on the bottom of the bumper, including the custom front bumper piece to top it off. I then added some other fixtures like the windshield wipers, the badge, the single washer nozzle, and the antenna on the front of the car right by the hood area. After that, I reduced the size of the rear brake since it was too powerful for the car, which reduced the braking power and, of course, reduced the weight, cost, and all that good stuff. For the back, it's pretty basic and straightforward. I added these taillights, the rear bumper, the old Soviet Union license plate with the plate's indent, and a rear bumper mounted light that a handful of the Trabants had back then. Now for the interior, I used some of the basic 70s and 80s fixtures to get this all together, such as the basic seats, the basic dashboard, a manual shifter, the pedals, the door cards, the AM radio that was painted white and black. That's so you know where the radio is at with the boring gray colored interior of this car. Finally, I gave it a name and added a custom paint job. So after getting everything done with this build, here's what I came out. This is the 1955 Trabol 750 SL. This mediocre communist city car based on the Trabant is a gas saver. With an MPG rating of 26.3 miles per gallon, you can kiss the west goodbye once this hits the streets. Even though it used an inline 3 engine, then an inline 2. Okay, so I got this knockoff Trabant all set and done here with the design of the interior and exterior of the vehicle. So despite our only problems with this here car, which there are six of them, such as tendency to oversteer, terminally oversteers, the engine being underpowered, the front charge being quite wide, the lack of power steering, and some unutilized oxygen for the engine, let's jump on over to BMG Drive and Angela Greets Engine Simulator to get a brief listen of my inline twin engine. So here I am with Beam and G and Ange the Great's engine program installed, and this maximizes this bad boy right here before we jump into BMG Drive. So here is the engine by Inline 2 Engine, as it's named right here, with the engine kind of angled quite a bit up in here, since it's my first time actually coding one. So I already got the engine sounds already set and done by exporting this here engine sound with the Ange the Great X engine exporter or something like that, which is kind of a lot of hoops that to jump through just to get this damn thing working. So let's give you a brief listen to what this engine sounds like, and uh, do the rest of it in BMG Drive. So starting up as so, the, the engine starter is kind of strong, 82 horsepower, 449 pounds feet of torque. So I did get the engine idle RPM to hover around 1200 RPM, even though in automation it was around like 1100, but I decided to go up a little bit more to 1200, just because why not. And now brief rev up. So it red lights pretty easily, and what sucks about this here engine is I upshift as so. The engine stalls. I believe my flywheel is a bit too heavy or what? I never really thought of this in mind until I started to upshift and do all that good stuff. So anyways, let's go over to Beam and G Drive to test out the freaking Trouble 750. 
So here I am at the map of Italy with the Trouble 750 all set and done here. And taking a look at the power graph right here as I start the engine up as so... Oh, I had to hit the gas pedal like before. So the power, as I mentioned in automation, I try to match up like I did with the inline 4, the inline 3, how it drops down like by 10 horsepower for each engine configuration. So instead of being around 33 horsepower, now it's at 21 horsepower. So a lot weaker than the inline 3 compared to this inline 2. So anyways, let's we'll start off our base performance test with this car, starting off with the 0-62 to acceleration test, followed by the 62-0 to brake test, and lastly, a topsy rod with this East German communist vehicle. So let's get ready to accelerate with this here bad boy, this inline 2, technically inline 3, now. Accelerate. Damn it! Alright, it's now two lanes, and we're going at, like, low highway speeds, going up to 50 miles an hour. Technically, the 0-62 at the inline 3 would be, like, right around here in the mid to low 20s. We're in a passing lane right now, not passing anybody other than ourselves. 60, stand by, 61, and... 60, uh, 0-62 in the 38.42 seconds of 2,219.56 feet! Jesus Christ, man! I think this is probably my worst 0 to 62 test of all time. Let me get the speed to 62 and we'll hit the brakes. All right, 61, 62, break. Micro lag, please. 62 to 0 at 3.12 seconds of 130.48 feet. Well, for the brakes this car, it's pretty average for a non-ABS vehicle, but at least we got the distance covered compared to the freaking 0 to 62 where this was abysmal, but this in terms of distance, but braking wise, not so bad. And go around me, people. So for a top speed run, that guy's got his lights and sirens on, so we got a first person view past these two police cars. Can we get a better 0 to 62? Ooh, by a couple seconds, not that bad. So a 3663 versus my 3842 because of my... Damn, cam capitalist pigs. Get my way. Yeah, so I did a freaking wheel spin launch, like, right off the gate in a 20 horsepower vehicle, which that caused me to get a better 0 to 60 by almost a couple seconds. And not only that, I think our best speed, okay, 68 miles an hour, we're pretty much on pace with the Roamer right here. Are you kidding me? Okay, he's in the brakes. Make the left lane useful. Okay, in the tunnel. Damn, turn our lights on ass so. 77 miles an hour. Freaking Luca Doncic up in here. 78. So apparently the top speed run is unfortunately going to be a fail as the police are pursuing you. Let's make this jump. Another jump. Get out of my way, officers. Let's just do that instead. So apparently... Stop it, please. Just pull me over and do your job, for God's sake. So there's my dashboard. I got busted for speedy, go the wrong way, police collision, traffic collision. Well, whatever. Just have your own bury away as I jump this in to a basic time trial run right now. So staying at this map here, we're going to be doing three laps with the mini village loop circuit laid out here. It's a very, very small and somewhat notorious type of layout for my channel, or pretty much for my channel, of testing out extremely slow vehicles around like, what, a half a mile or three quarter of a mile track that we got going here? So let's start things off here. Three, two, one, go. 4,000 RPM launch and... Can you two get out of my way, please? I can't do this anymore. Ooh, nice right-hander. I'll say I can't do this anymore with the freaking UI. I like to get rid of the torque graph here. And oh, now it's gone, my thingy here. I'll say my other freaking MPG counter is gone, but we still got the powered torque graph on the top right portion of the screen here. Ah, huh, interesting. So I'm a little bit surprised this car is doing not that bad around this here course. We should probably take this to like maybe a longer course like Port Jim Connor. So they'll probably do that a little bit. So we're around 30 miles an hour. Stayed consistent like some of my other cars where it struggled to get up the hill. Like at the pull of the freaking wind app or something. Or just go YOLO mode and hope to God I get up that hill. But it seems like we're doing a great job with this car. I really underestimate this machine. And coming up to the final quarter, Exate Track Limit says the FIA, and final straightaway of a lap time of 27 seconds, 350 milliseconds. Screw this barrier, and gives us first place of 1 bit 26 seconds, 760 milliseconds, compared to my second place car, the People's Car Poverty Edition. Yeah, so this is where my poor ass cars, my slow ass cars, come to me to see if I can complete this time trial. So I did poorly there, and I did great right there. So free roam, we're upside down, and we are right side up once again. So let's do another time trial run right now. 
So the second time trial right here is through the center. It's just only one lap around this here course as so. So left-hander. Micro oversteering. Since the through the village loop was pretty, I mean, stupidly short, I might as well just continue off with the time trials going out here to see its true agility, like going through this here alleyway as so. At around highway speeds, I can run away from the cops or something. And is there curb? Ooh, not bad, like some of the other cars where it can't take the curb. Look at that. Damn, it's pretty nice. So down the stairs. Keep forming it. A little bit of scraping the bumper. I can't see behind me, so whatevs. So I'll pretty much say right off the bat that the car is just simply agile, no matter what. It's a two-meter wheelbase, rear-wheel drive, East German communist car that's... Ooh, a little bit of a roll there. Oh, man. I'm about to say it was fully agile to the point where I was like, again, that some of that body roll up in there. But I'd say it's, it's like 70% agile. Performance-wise, not that great. As you see, the 0 to 60 test, right hand, our 0 to 62 test was putrid up in here for around 35 seconds at the most. See, it accelerates poorly, has a poor top speed with the modified engine to 21 horsepower instead of 33 ish. It wasn't increasing speed or decreasing speed at that hill, so we pretty much stayed at a constant speed with the pedal just mashed all the way down. Final corner as we go of a 2 minutes, 13 seconds, 571 milliseconds. Not too bad. Okay, what's a 55 hour collisions like? With an interior view, and we recoil back so the barrier went straight through us and straight back at us. So, with the, the aftermath of destruction vehicle, we got the front end damaged, and that is with the car. So, anyways, for the final part of the video, let's drop ourselves down to Brutal Slope 2.0 to see if this communist car will keep up with the capitalists. So, take it to the top of the ramp right now. So here I am facing by certain doom at the top of the ramp, so let's accelerate down the ramp as so to get a much, much better 0 to 62 time. Like, watch this, watch this. Like, uh, average communist, uh, I said communist car, like, commuter car speeds. 0 to 62 in 6.06 .06 seconds of 246.47 feet. Over rev risk? There we go, over rev risk as we're going on freaking inline 2 NASCAR stuff. Valve trade damage, mount over rev, engine torque reduced. Come here! Jesus Christ, louder than before! So at 180 miles an hour, at the bottom of the ramp, we're gonna get a speed of 196 miles an hour at the top of the ramp of our exit, about 150. Do a do a front flip. Please, hit the brakes. <gasps> oh, we almost did a freaking front flip. Uh, back flip as we go. Now let's slow it down to 50 times slow-mo as I can position myself, for God's sake. So here is the car. Base drop at all four wheels. There goes the seats, there goes the dashboard, it goes by transmission fixtures and everything with my janky engine creation with my 3D fixtures because of a lack of fixtures available in automation to make this engine possible in a way. So it's full time it. It's all the other piece of debris. Flies away. And what was that that tried to attack the car? It couldn't the dashboard, it couldn't all that good stuff. So the car is at a rest right here. So a brief look at this car, we got the drive shaft completely exposed. If you're in the back seat of this car, especially, what, the back left passenger seat, um... There's a good chance you'd probably be impaled, and look at this polygonal mess right here, including the front seats. The radio's messed up, and all that stuff is also messed up with this here car. Now for the final part of the video, as I accelerate down the top of the hill as so, we're getting ready to crash ourselves way down at the bottom at the square block, aka as I call it, the wedge thingy, which basically wedges a car as you crash at it at a very, very high speed. So apparently we got a better 0-62 to at 5.77 seconds of 240.15 feet, so pretty much like a basic sports car, so to make a friggin' Pentastar V6 or something like that. Not that bad. And the speed we're gonna crash this out to is gonna be in the 180s, 100, probably 185 upon collision. So let's get a camera going. Let's do it from the left right here. And 100 times solo, here we go. There goes the car, smooshy McDouchy, and bass drop goes to BBG sound effects as I collide with the wall. There goes some of the fixtures with the seats. This and that. What are those? There's shoes, like just like freaking Vine and full time. And I thought that was the horn. There goes my seats. There goes the dashboard. And no, 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 the back seats attack of the car. Sheesh. Okay, so we got the car. I just basically no grabbed this down at the very bottom here. So the car, yes, we got ourselves a somewhat of a wedge shaped look at the car as the drive shaft pokes straight up in the air like a freaking howitzer or some sort of artillery cannon up in here. Sheesh. 
So that'll do it with automation and BBG drive with the Trouble 750SL. For a mock-up of an inline twin engine due to the lack of fixtures, I'd say it sounds great. In terms of performance, well, it's expected for a wannabe Trabant. It takes forever to accelerate and reach its top speed, but it handles corners great, which I'll give credit to this car. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future. So this is Tries Rising Up, and signing out.